Conference on ESPN Plus. We're in Monroe, Louisiana, where the Grambling Tigers have come up the road to tangle with the ULM Warhawks. After a 63-60 loss to Lamar, ULM coach Keith Richard called it a debacle. The Warhawks bounce back. They shot 53%. They beat Stephen F. Austin 66-55. And Coach Richard, Keith Richard, let loose, Coach. Well, if you don't think that was a big win, it was a big win to him, as he just showed you right there. Well, tonight, we welcome you inside Fett Ewing Coliseum. I'm Chris Harris, alongside Coach Mike Vining. You took his team to seven NCAA tournaments as Northeast and ULM head coach Chris Harris. Mike Vining as the Grambling Tigers at one and three face the two and two ULM Warhawks here in Monroe. Let's take a look at the history of these two teams, the matchup. This will be the six all-time meeting, four and one. ULM leads it. Let's take a look, though, at the Grambling starting five. They'll go with senior Cameron Cunningham, Cam Kristen, the junior, and then a pair of seniors in Randolph and Moss and Sarion McGee, a couple of guys Averaging five points or less in the starting lineup for ULM. The big man, Chris Efret Tui. And Kareem Ozier coming off a 28-point performance in that win over Stephen F. Austin on Saturday. Elijah Gonzalez, a breakout game. 16 points to Juco transfer. And then Morency and Harrison, another couple of Juco transfers around out the lineup for the ULM Warhawks. For Grambling, their head coach is Dante Jackson. His third season at Grambling, 51 and 46. He was the 17-18 SWAC Coach of the Year. And here's Keith Richard in his 11th season at ULM. And Coach Vani get a chance to watch him dancing. He was an assistant under you, and I know you were proud to see him get some relief on Saturday. It, it was great, especially after the loss. You know, he didn't feel like they played very well against Lamar and then come in and beat a very, very good Stephen F. Austin team. He was happy, and, and the team was really celebrating with him. It was great to see. We're underway here at Fant Ewing Coliseum. Elijah Gonzalez earns his first start at the Division I level after that brilliant performance on Saturday. The first shot taken by Harrison. The Juco All-American, Juco Player of the Year last year. He and Gonzalez, they were teammates at Clarendon College. They come here together, along with an assistant for ULM as well. You know, Harrison has got the shot. He wanted. He just he carried it in there, and it just didn't go for him. But he's, I think they'll be very active. These kids know each other. You know, I think they come to Monroe a good bit, and I'm sure that uh, ULM goes to Cramlin or Ruston some also. So they, they hang around each other some. Sirion McGee getting the start, the redshirt sophomore. First start of the year, he travels with it. Gives it back to ULM in a scoreless ball game. This Grambling team averaging just 54 points per game. ULM at 70 is a three taken and hit by Marco Morency. Yeah, he was just spotted up. You know, they were trying to uh, dribble off of Harrison up high and let him either step out, pick and pop, or either pick and roll. Probably wouldn't roll because uh, effort two is down there, and then was able to get it over there to Marcy, and he knocked it down. Trevelle Cunningham, the point guard for Grambling, a spin on the baseline, and a shot no good from uh, Prince Moss, and the rebound pulled down by ULM. You know, effort two just went up and got that one. And the way he went after it, you'd think he'd be averaging more than uh, three rebounds a game. Gonzalez hit on the arm by Prince Moss. Well, that's our first foul of the ball game. Prince Moss, the 6'7 redshirt senior from Bessemer, Alabama. Lots of transfers on both teams on this roster. We'll see play here tonight as Gonzalez misses the first free throw. Mentioned his great game, or rather, uh, uh, Kareem Ozier, rather, at the line for ULM. My apologies. Ozier, 28 points in the game on Saturday. 35 minutes, four threes as he hits the second. And ULM takes a 4 nothing lead. You know, he was able to, 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 get, his, uh, to get in there and get the foul, and then uh, you know, was, ULM was kind of struggling at the free throw line, but he was able to get that second one. Cunningham starts to drive. They work it around the perimeter. And not much at the rim, but a rebound put back is up and in for Terion Randolph, the senior. Rambling began their season on a two-game road trip to Arizona. They took out Grand Canyon, and Arizona lost a pair of games out there. They won their first home game against East Texas Baptist on December 3rd. Three by Gonzalez is no good. Then or they won that game and then lost at Texas Tech their last time out. It's been a tough schedule. An offensive foul there is 
called against the driving Terry on Randolph. And so far, good defense against the team that kind of struggles offensively. But they face some tough opponents, especially look at Texas Tech ranked 17th in the country. That was 10 days ago, their game this past weekend against Incarnate Word was canceled because of COVID. Driving in is Harrison, his floater wouldn't fall. The rebound pulled down by Randolph. He got to the basket, just wasn't able to get it to go for him. Cunningham up top. The defense being applied there by Gonzalez. Forced out, last touch they say by Elijah. 16 points, three three-pointers, a career-high seven assists in the game on Saturday against Stephen F. Austin. I couldn't see the ball, but I know he kept moving with it, so something had to happen. I think mean, he, he had a hold of it or knocked it out of his hand. McGee has a big size advantage. Gonzalez poked it free. Randolph kicks it out. Now a three a little bit too strong from Cunningham. Another rebound pulled down by the Warhawks. You know, Marcy come in and uh, they got that long rebound, and he's going to take it to, to the other end himself. Warren, he only had three points, but affected the game in many ways. That time he couldn't get that short one to fall. And he got a hand on a pass across court that was intended for Randolph. It's it back over to Woodall. Now Kristen triggers the three. It's off the mark. Offensive rebound by Randolph. The Gonzalez thought he had that one. Kind of a uh, razzle-dazzle first step. Four yeah. minutes here. Hard for any team to get into little a travel. rhythm offensively. Little, little, little travel, really. Extra spin move that time for Cunningham. Head coach Dante Jackson. And some great stops before ending up at Grambling State. Head coach at Stillman College in Tuscaloosa. Averaged 21 wins a year. Prior to that, coach at his alma mater, Central State in Ohio. Warren C. Step back three. It's blocked by Kristen, and he saves it. Boy, he did a good job of saving his, it. Yeah, to his own man. Tracking it down, Kristen gets it back. You know, a lot of times when guys block, when they try to knock it up in the stands, well, then it just gives it back to the other team. He blocked it and was able to, to save it. Well, so far, they missed their first three threes. As live stats finally uh, started up, I believe. <laughs> I think we've got it going now. Elijah Gonzalez. See the missed threes. Grambling comes in. They rank 320th nationally. And three-point percentage is 16%. Harrison with five to shoot. There's a deep three, and he hits it. Maybe he was just too close, those other two shots. Ozier, Harrison, and Gonzalez combined for 55 of the 66 points against Stephen F. Austin on Saturday. They finished on a 16-2 run. It's a tremendous win for this Warhawks team. Well, you know, Stephen F. Austin has beat a lot of good people. Step back by Moss. No good. Moore and see the rebound. That was a tough shot. ULM by five. Penetrates. Draws some contact underneath. And the foul will be on Randolph. And Moore and see will have some free throws when we come back. Well, not necessarily a fast start offensively for either team. But ULM has a five-point lead over the Grambling Tigers. your first order using the code order today. Fans here in Monroe, it's 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 chilly out there. It's it's kind of nasty outside the last couple of days, but perfect 70 degrees inside Fant Ewing Coliseum and alongside the legend here in Monroe, coach Mike Vining. Chris Harris with you. Wayne Gentry is our producer out in the truck. Yeah, one great thing about basketball, you get very few rainouts. <laughs> that's that's tremendous. Free throw good by Marco Morency. ULM shooting 25%, two of eight to start the ball game, rambling at one for seven as Morency knocks down both free throws. So he's got a three and two free throws. All he's got to do is get a two, and he'll be the trifecta here. The team uh, ULM at the free throw line, 66% on the year. 
And the offense has been, uh, you know, ULM has been in a zone a little, a little while now, but he knocked that one down. Three from the corner by Prince Moss. 38% three-point shooter. He's their best three-point shooter. Also has the most athleticism on their team. I think Coach Richard just was going to try to keep him from penetrating to the basket. That was in line, just a little short. Harrison misses in the corner. Three by Morency is an air ball. So two not bad looks, but no cigar. Woodall in the ball game. He has his shot rejected down low from Everett Tui, who's averaging a block per game. And ULM with a four-point lead. Ozier. Gonzalez spots for three. That was right on target, too. Ozier, the offensive rebound. And he's hit on the arm by the Juco, or the transfer from Florida Gulf Coast, Brian Thomas. Actually, they're going to get Travell Cunningham instead of Thomas. And a floor foul. Morency will trigger the inbounds. Gonzalez was four, or rather three of four from the line. Ozier was four of five from three on Saturday as Ozier is fouled on the baseline by Kristen. Yeah, right in front of the bench. They didn't, they didn't really like that much. First foul, 15 foul. Yeah, I can see why not a piece of the basketball, maybe a piece of the hand of Kareem Ozier. You know, after two is, you know, he blocked a shot on the other end and has got a couple of boards. And he had hurt his ankle earlier in the year. And so it looks like he may be moving a little bit better. I know that'd be a welcome sign for Coach Richard. Ozier now two of three at the line so far today. Well, we got Howell coming in. Now the freshman will check in. Ozier, Juco transfer from Sacred Heart from Racine, Wisconsin. Double figures in three of his first four. He's two for his first four now at the line. Wellen doubling up Rambling at 10-5. Prince Moss gets it back from Cunningham. Spot up three for Kristen is good. They finally knocked down to three. And they're now one of five. With that back man on the on the zone, on the 2-3 zone, got screened, and uh, Christian just had a wide open shot and, and knocked it down. Hard to tell the strategy for Grambling on the offensive end. Gonzalez. Seven assists on Saturday. Warren C5 on the shot clock, and he had it stripped away by Woodall on the baseline. Stays with ULM, five on the shot clock. The house coming in for effort two. ULM's got five, like you, like you said, they got to get it in and, and get the shot they're looking for. Now the freshman from Natchitoches, St. Mary's High School, had a great return, home against Northwestern State, and an offensive foul. No, he, yeah, it was. I thought he dribbled out of bounds. He he hooked him. So Harrison called for the foul. Yeah, you see with that left arm, he brought it around. And yeah, he just hooked him. <laughs> The defender. But they said he used that chicken wing. <laughs> Chance for Grambling to tire take the lead on this possession. They're in the goal. Woodall has it out front. He started the first four games, not starting today. As Hal pulls down his first rebound and gets it to Gonzalez. Grambling still struggling from the field. Three for their first 12. Harrison, wide open three, just to a little bit too strong, and the rebound pulled down by Moss. Yeah, he just hadn't got it. He hadn't got zeroed in yet. Cunningham drives against Gonzalez. Might have been a travel there, no call. And out front, top of the key, three from Cameron Woodall. Well, they've zeroed in. For Gramlin, they've got those threes going now. That puts them on top by one. Morency quickly the other way. Tough shot from underneath. It was altered by Thomas. Now Grambling trying to extend their lead. A tough drive to the bucket by Woodall. And he'll head to the free throw line. Foul by Gonzalez. Number three for the Warhawks, Elijah Gonzalez. His first foul, second team foul. So at the line is Cameron Woodall, a native of Raymond, Mississippi. Transferred in from Colin. Not too far down the road. And 19.7 rebounds in 23 minutes in their loss at Arizona. Impressive line as he makes that first free throw, a 60% free throw shooter. Well, he was taking it to the goal. He, he knew where he wanted to go. 
You see Gonzalez and Morency come out of the ball game. And checking in for ULM, you have Zakir Sawyer for the first time. Checking in for Rambling is Tremichael Moten. You know, Gramlin just in that little 2-2-1, two, two, just kind of a harassment uh, press. It's going to give you a chance to give them the ball. Baseline jumper from Harrison is no good. Rebound corralled by Thomas. You know what? Off the bench, you see Woodall, Thomas. They've been starters. They come off the bench today, and they're giving them a spark. Is driving to the rim is Cameron Kristen, as he has his first two-point bucket after that made three. Five points for Kristen. Now a five-point lead for Grambling. They are on a 10-0 run. But well, ULM just hadn't been able to score. They you know, they got their shots. It's Josh Nicholas, who also checked in, tries to reverse layup. No, how goes up for the rebound. Now tapped on the baseline, and it will stay with ULM nine on the shot clock. But what a spark here for Grambling. Well, yeah, ULM's getting to the to the basket. They're just not being able to finish with it. And, and Grambling is zeroed in. They're knocking down those threes. Cameron Kristen, Cameron Woodall knocking down some threes. 10-0 run for Grambling. And she was in the stands cheering me on. Well, the Grambling State Tigers and their head coach, Dante Jackson, they're impressing right now. A 10-0 run has put them on top by five, 15-10. Remo Zier hits the inbounds. They did push the shot clock out to 20 as Josh Nicholas takes a contested three. No good. How the offensive rebound. As it's like here Sawyer as it rustled away yeah, by they, Cameron Kristen. Yeah, they, they just surrounded him. He hadn't uh, really, ooh, that, that was a good shot. Cameron Woodall, he's left-handed, and he went to the left side that time strong with that hand. Here comes a press now as Grambling leads by seven. I said, yeah, they're going to just kind of a harassment press. Underneath, boy, a hard bump as Sawyer, the freshman, went up strong. He's still on the floor. As you see underneath the bucket, Howe keeps it alive. And finally, as DeMarcus Hall misses, Grambling comes away with it. This is a fierce and physical game underneath that bucket. Yeah, there, you're just trying to overpower uh, Grambling. You know, they can jump. They're athletic, too. They're going to go up there with you. you got to give a fake. you got to pump fake, get it out, and give somebody else a chance to, to shoot it while they're up in the air. Corner three on the way, a little bit off the mark that time from Cunningham. That was a nifty uh, pass from Woodall down low to Thomas, who saw Cunningham open in the corner for three as Ozier running the offense here for ULM. Yeah, Grammy now is back to the 2 3 zone. You know, I think he's got uh, Ozier maybe forced that three. Yeah, well, that's one. It was going for him the other night, and so he was trying to get that with two. You know, Coach Richard's got Sawyer, and I think just for his athleticism, he's just got to realize it, that he's playing against some good athletes, too. Pull up three off the mark that time for Moten. And the rebound pulled down by ULM. ULM has gone absolutely cold from the field. One for their last 19. And haven't scored in four and a half minutes. Underneath, reverse layup is good by the freshman DeMarcus Hall as he stops that streak in a almost five-minute scoring drought. You know, he got the ball and, and went up and under instead of just going up and trying to overpower Gramlin. A couple of subs are ready to check in at the scorer's table. Taylor and Cobb at a timeout taken by Dante Jackson. With Gramlin on top by five at 17 to 12. Yeah, ULM was able to get the ball on the baseline, and Hall just took it to the basket, and he was able to go under and, and uh, get that basket instead of trying to go up and overpower him. You sometimes you just have to get around them. I'm going to start off the bench. Cameron Woodall, who had started, seeing him power up with that left hand. He is left-handed, the six-seven junior from Raymond, Mississippi. He is. He is athletic, and you can see. Uh, you know, he had been starting. He's averaging nine points a game. You know, he had the 19 points at Arizona. Then he went scoreless in 14 minutes 
only taking two shots in their game 10 days ago in Lubbock against Texas Tech. You know, <laughs> getting 19 at Arizona, it's not an easy task. Arizona's got a good team. Of course, Texas Tech's really good. A lot of new faces in there for Grambling. Edwards at Cobb. Top of the key three on the way is off the mark from Peyton Taylor. And here comes ULM down by five. Neither team setting the world on fire shooting the basketball. Here Coach Richard's got all an eight in the game now. All working around a lot of the young guys in for ULM as well. With all an eight underneath. Going up strong with Zakir Sawyer. He was blocked, but a foul will be called on Big Brian Thomas, the six foot nine graduate transfer. His first foul, six deep foul. Yeah, that's, that's two he's going in there and not able to not able to get him up. They're going with him. And behind, they whistled Kelton Edwards. Sirion McGee checks back in for Grambling. And as Thomas comes back down, I know in the preseason, Dante Jackson was talking about Thomas you know, transferring in from Florida Gulf Coast, being an older guy at 23, being a leader on this Grambling team as the free throws go now three-point game for ULM as they try to claw their way back into it. You know, Sawyer took that ball to the goal and then he hit his two free throws. And that's one of the things that Coach Richard talked about him uh, before the season started, that he just hard nose and he'll just take it to the goal. Volleyball underneath. Well, tapped around a miss from Rayon yeah. Cobb. And now here comes ULM three on two break. There's some contact. Shot underneath, no good. There's Powell to clean up the miss. And begging for a call was Josh Nicholas. He thought he was fouled on the way up, but now a one-point game, six straight now for ULM. You know, I was concerned about uh, Zakir. He was taking it down the floor. You know, a lot of times when a guy's not used to handling it, uh, early in the game, he'll run over somebody after he gives up the pass. Sarion McGee, good spin move on Howe, and he lays it up and in. Sarion McGee, the redshirt sophomore. Yeah, that was a good move. They had him stopped, and then he just uh, was like up and under and was able to finish it. He's from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. There with the State Fair Community College. We're coming to Grambling. Spin into the lane. Now a really tough shot by Zakir Sawyer. Good rebound underneath. And he spin, kick it back out. Sawyer. Five to shoot. Deep three from the logo, no good. Up top by Erie Olene. Yeah, Olene just happened to see the shot clock. He was way, way out of range, but uh, at least he got it off. We saw Gramley. They played 11, 12 guys pretty much in all four of their games so far. Again, the red shirt sophomore, Sarion McGee underneath. He is controlling things, not necessarily tall, but 6'8", well, 6'8", tall in this game. But well, using that physicality underneath the rim. ULM finds themselves down by five here in the first half. Great night to take the kids out. Enjoy some college basketball as Coach Keith Richard's club trailing the Grambling State Tigers here in the first half, 21-16. And Coach Vining, when you're four for 27, really remarkable. They're just down yeah, five. You're lucky to be down five when you're four for 27. Uh, you know, they just hadn't shot the ball well. You know, Harrison hit the one three and then uh, hadn't been able to connect. And they kind of struggled offensively. They hadn't got any kind of flow yet. Phillips throws it right to Cobb. Phillips gets back after he checks in for the first time. And he's called for the foul. And Rayon Cobb, the 6'9 junior, will head to the charity straight out. No, they call it on the floor, so they'll inbound. You know, Luke thought he got back and, and took that charge. He did get there, but evidently he was still moving some. Our official, that's Barton Lennox, checking at the scorer's table. You know, Phillips did run the floor well. Three in the That's corner three. is good. And guess who? That's Cameron Kristen. So Kristen with the bucket. And the lead is 7 to 23 to 16. Now that's his second three. So 
He called it just a two. Phillips, who can shoot the three, picks it up. He'll set a screen over there for Josh Nicholas. Harrison step back three on the way. That one's good. He can fill it up. Russell it's his Harrison. second to three. And they need Russell Harrison to step up here as they trim the lead back to four. One reason why they've stayed in this game is Coach finding 11 offensive rebounds. Yes, they've, they've really pulled down some boards and got, you know, two or three baskets in there. They were very active down there. Cunningham. Skip pass into the far corner. Prince Moss gives it up. They're working that baseline in that corner. Cunningham finds a lane, a tough scoop, and another foul mm. will be called. And I think on Phillips. Yeah, Phillips went up with it. They must have got it. He must have got him with the body because he was up. It's tough sledding for a small guard. Cunningham taking over point guard duties. This year, as he makes the first free throw, 57% free throw shooter. You see Ozier and Gonzalez checking in. And Cameron Woodall, the lefty, also back in for the Tigers. One more coming here for Cunningham. Last year, averaged 20 minutes, five points per game. He makes that, uh, that free throw. Take it over for point guard Ivy Smith Jr. And Devontae Jackson, they lost from last year's team. That was 40% of their scoring. So they're back to man to man now. So with, with the uh, with the other guards back in. I was here in the corner. Drives on his man. That's Kriston and hands it stripped away. He's just just not able to finish in there with that. What all goes up? He's blocked from behind by Phillips. Yeah. Got a little bit of revenge that time. Yeah, he did a great job of getting up there, and he's running the floor now too. He really ran the floor well. They'll feed the big fella. Ozier or Gonzalez. Three guard lineup with those two and Morency. Was Harrison and Phillips. Harrison, tough drive to the basket, but he hangs Russell in the air. Harrison. A little levitation. And Harrison cuts the lead to four. Yeah, that Harrison's, they're going to get him going. And, you know, maybe he will be now with that, uh, with that three and then that two. Prince Moss, looking around Woodall and Cunningham. Well, they're trying to work it on Phillips inside then and got it to him, but he wasn't able to shoot it and then get it out for an air ball. Gonzalez trying to run the ball down, couldn't. And a layup is good from Sirion McGee. And he's fouled, so a chance for the old-fashioned three-point play. A turnover turned into another yeah. turnover. Yeah, Gonzalez just... They, they slapped it from behind, and he wasn't able to get to it. That was on Marco Morency, his first. Yeah, but he's sitting here getting ready to, like you said, get that, get that three-point play. Only, made, only shot one free throw coming in. Now he's two for two on the year. Sometimes those officials anticipate a foul. Not been the case that time. Seven point lead for Grambling. ULM trying to make a run here in the last four minutes of this first half. We'll have that last media timeout. Harrison off a screen. Pull up. No effort. Tui down low. He's back in the ball game, but Cunningham pulls down the rebound for Grambling. Some ULM. As off his feet. It wasn't a kick, it was thrown off of his feet. Moss gives it back to Cunningham with 13 to shoot. Coach Jackson was calling a play for him. Woodall, he's got a sweet little jump shot. That one misses, and Harrison skies for the rebound. Gonzalez pull up three. NBA range is good. He really, of course, he was he and Ozier that picked up the team on Saturday, and that may be the case here today, too. Well, that, they, they need somebody, too, right now, and, of course, maybe he's been being too close. He's been trying to penetrate and take it to the goal. He may be better off trying to spot up outside. Spin the lane by Sirion McGee. He has been super aggressive so far. And he draws the foul. We'll have free throws from him when we come back. 
Elijah Gonzalez finally gets on the scoreboard, his first three of the ball game. Your LM trying to claw back down by four. Back here at Bet Ewing Coliseum. As ULM trails Grambling by four, they've improved to ULM. Their shooting percentage to 22%. Grambling shooting 39%. And at the free throw line is Sirion McGee. Richard sophomore from Milwaukee. His second free throw of the year. Two for two now making three for three on the season. Two for two tonight. You know, that's that's two good spin moves he's made around the basket to get away from the de defenders. Of course, you know, Everett Tui is 7-1, so he did a great job of getting away from him, and then Everett Tui hit him from behind. That's a really nice uh, free throw stroke. He'll come out of the game, and he transfers from Florida Gulf Coast. Brian Thomas back in, and they apply some full-court pressure. Their lead extends to six on yes, ULM. They're, yeah, they're trapping now. You just get the ball in the middle. If they get... If they can get Gonzalez trapped, they'll have a rough time to run him out of bounds. Uh, it like a, maybe a foul on Javel Cunningham, but that's what Elijah Gonzalez is begging for. You know, trying to get those big guys against a little shorter guard, and he just keeps riding him out, and he, he keeps going, and they pushed him out of bounds. That Cunningham and Gonzalez matchup is going to be a fun one to watch throughout the rest of this game. Three wide open from Prince Moss is good. So Moss hits the three, he has six. You know, a lot of times when you're that open, you stop, you hesitate, you miss it because you're too open. But it didn't phase him at all. He just took his time and, and drilled it. Largest lead now for the Tigers is nine. This is DeMarcus Hall, the freshman. And maybe a good call that time on Cameron Woodall, his first. You mentioned, Coach, during that break, uh, the, the lack of turnovers so far in this game for both teams. It is. Well, you know, except that one that uh, Gonzalez just went out of bounds over there. They had had three turnovers up to that point. Uh, I think that was their fourth one. One and one. They're in the bonus. There's an offensive rebound from Efra Tui, the 7-1 center. Now Thomas on the way to the floor is called for traveling. You know, after two in Hall was fighting over it with, among themselves, and Gramlin finally got a hold of it and, and traveled with it. So ULM gets the ball back, down by nine. ULM's doing, I mean, uh, Gramlin's doing a little more trapping. They're, they're trying to, to get some turnovers. Now is in Cunningham. Now Ozier maybe called for an offensive foul, and he is. It was sold well by Cunningham, who is playing lights out right now. For Coach Dante Jackson's club. Zero tried to turn that corner down there and uh, just got over there and, and got that chest in the middle of his shoulder. Zero was just uh, stuck there like a statue looking to see what had happened. Yeah, I think when he got it, he, he was trying to go baseline and go to the basket. And they just did a great job of cutting it off. And it was right there in front of Grandma's bench, so they got a good cheering squad. Tristan bounce pass inside to Moss. Right-handed hook is just taken away by Efren Tui. <laughs> just, just, just took it in the air and never got out of his hand. Efren Tui is second block. Elijah Gonzalez gets it over to Morency. Looks like a couple of double screen. Morency triggers the three. That one's good. Big three for Morency. His second of the ball game. Well, they needed that one. You know, ULM had got down nine, so you just kind of Dig yourself a little hole here. You need to, you need to stay in, in uh, striking distance. Three on the way from Kristai is good. After a cold start, Kristai knocks down another three, and he has ten to lead all scores. Three by Morris. He matched Harrison with eight to lead ULM in scoring. Lead back to nine. You know, you get down, and then you have a rally. It's, it's, it's going to be spurts, and when, you, when your spurt's over, you shouldn't be just still tied. Once he got hit by Kristan, but no foul was called. Thomas gets it, pass ahead for Kristan, and he dunks with two hands. Largest lead now, 11 for yeah. the Tigers. They just got that one, got a long rebound, got out, and he finished with it. That's that high percentage shot. 40 seconds left now in this first half. 
What a run this Grambling Tigers team has been on, driving the baseline. Now will be called and free throws to be shot. Kind of a ticky tack foul on the baseline there, kind of bailed out Morton, so he really had nowhere to go. It's the second foul on Criston. You know, sometimes if, if you're trying to drive and you get bumped and go out of bounds, they'll call a foul rather than calling you out of bounds. It is one in one time. Marco Morency, eight points in the ball game. Two for two so far tonight. Eight of ten on the season. This is the front end. Can't that's, get that one to go. That's like a turnover in basketball. You yep, miss that front it end. Is. It is. And you're down 11 and you get a chance to, to cut it to single digits and, and uh, miss a free throw. That hurts you. Chance for Grambling to take the last shot. Edwards comes to get it. He just checked in. Cunningham and it poked away by Gonzalez out of bounds. There's literally about a half of a second differential shot clock and game clock. Entering for the Tigers. And Kriston with those two fouls right back in. Can't miss lately, so why not? This is Woodall. Yeah. Now they're Cunningham. Cunningham going to drive. Yeah, Cunningham was looking for it and got it. Great stop, and then he hits it. And Gonzalez will be well short on that uh, last second heave. And that ends the first half. A 13-point lead for Grambling. Yeah, they just, ULM just went cold and, and went a long period of time and, and wasn't able to score. They just got to keep plugging away and not try to catch all, catch it up in one trip down the floor. ULM shot just 23% in the first half. Grambling, 45%. Coach Reshar going to be looking for some answers. Well, he is. They, they're going to have to just get, move a little bit more, uh, get some offense going. You know, I think they've just been trying to, to take their shots. When somebody gets it, go get a shot. They're going to have to let their offense get them a shot, move the ball around. Uh, Grambling can move as fast as you can dribble. They can't move as fast as you can pass. Halftime here in Monroe. Welcome back inside Fant Ewing Coliseum here in Monroe, Louisiana on the Bayou. Grambling with a 40-27 lead over the Warhawks at uh, an intermission. Good to see you. We've uh, been away most of this uh, year, separated here. Coach Mike Vining, Chris Harris with you. And uh, Coach, second half coming up, this uh, ULM squad will uh, have to figure some things out in the locker room. Well, they do. You know, they've got to get a little bit uh, rhythm going in their offense. They've got some shots that didn't go, and then they hadn't had that many turnovers, but they've been a minute and 20-something seconds without scoring right now, and, and Grambling's on a 7-0 run, and here's, uh, here's some of the stats. Shooting 23% from the floor. A lot of uh, offensive rebounds. Well, look at those rebounding totals, 26-21. 12 of those coming on the offensive end, but shots just are not falling. That's pretty much the... The, the, the key. Yeah, they, they just hadn't got it. And you see Gramlin has got 10 points off of turnovers and ULM's only got three. It hasn't been a lot of turnovers this game, which is uh, you know a little bit unusual. Of course, there's this kind of a slow-paced game. They're not just running up and down the floor and jacking it up. And the points in the paint, Grambling has really dominated down low. We were talking during the break a little bit about Howell and Effort Tui, and those guys are going to have to step it up in the second half. Yeah, they are. And, and they've got to deny the ball a little bit, and then uh, like I said, they've done a good job rebounding, but they've Grambling has made some good spin moves inside and been able to score. Well, let's uh, take a look uh, at uh, some of the first half stats. Is there's Prince Moss, Cameron Criston, the transfer from Boise State. Coach, he got hot from three. Yes, he did. He can he can really shoot the ball well, and they're they're just athletic. You see, they just they just surround them there and take it away. And then uh, Sirion McGee, who got the start today, his first start, he was dominating the paint, gave up some height, but his physicality took over. You know, he just split that trap. They, they had two people in there, and he just split them and finished it. He just went up strong with it. You know, there's another turnover. He got punched behind, and they finished that. You know, they got some easy baskets. Mm -hmm. says, ULM has just got to get in their rhythm. That was a big shot right there, you know. Like I mentioned earlier, Moss just drilled that when he was wide open. And sometimes that's the hardest shot to hit. There was the dunk by Chris Stein that kind of capped off the first half. They were 5 of 12 from three. 
and shot 45 percent. Marco Morency had a pair of threes and he got the thing. He got everything started and he thought it was going to be a great day shooting again, but it kind of cooled off a bit. Yeah, he hit early and then it was a while before he got another one. But, you know, maybe he can get it started here in the second half. Then, you know, uh, Sawyer come down with a big one and it was wasn't able to get it. And they, they were looking for a charge on Sawyer, but they didn't get it. But Howell just did a good job on the offensive boards. Harrison finished the first half with eight points. We need to get him going, but turnovers were few and far between when they got him. Again, some good defense underneath from Luke Phillips. May see a little bit of him in the first half. Yeah, he just he just knocked half. that one out. And then Gonzalez drilled that one. And Gonzalez and really was a book in there. Morrency made the three at the beginning of the half, made one to end the half. But it's been a struggle uh, on the offensive end for ULM. Credit some good defense for Grambling. In the first half as well, one of the top teams as far as defending the two in the country. 61st in the nation. Second half action from here in Monroe comes your way next. You know. ULM and Grambling back on the floor for the second half. Swack versus Sunbelt. Rambling with a 13-point lead here at the break, led by Cameron Christon with those 12 points, a transfer from Boise State. Coach Keith Richard was just uh, oozing uh, joy on Saturday, but his club uh, trailing by 13 and a team rambling, averaging 54 points a game. They've already got 40. Yeah, that, that's that's really tough. You know, Harrison's got eight, morrissey has got eight for, for ULM, and then here's Christon's got... Uh, 12 and McGee's got 11 and the fact that, that for the first four games they averaged 54 points that says that you know ULM is going to step it up defensively and uh, get some stops. Looks like the uh, starting fives for both the clubs. Terry on Randolph, Siri on McGee both making their first starts of the year for Grambling. Randolph Brings it into Cunningham. We're off and running here in the second half. You got to say their first start got off to a success. Cunningham off the screen. Chris Stein, and they'll be closing out hard on him the rest of the night. Pull up long, too. He's feeling it. You see, they're, they're running that offense then. You know, it's a little more quickness to that step, a little more purpose in the step. They went, went somewhere looking for a, an opportunity to score. Going back to the first half, Grambling's hit their last four shots. You know, ULM's got it. They're coming off the down pick then for Harrison. That's what they were looking for, but it just didn't go for him. One and out as Chris Stein tracks down the rebound. He's now five of eight shooting. And has pulled down three rebounds, two assists. McGee had it knocked away from Mark by Marco Morency. Almost had a steal, and then, uh, but they were able to recover and get back and keep him from giving him that easy bucket. Good pump fake, but he threw it right to Morrency. Pass ahead for Ozier against two. He puts it up high up off the glass, but he can't finish it. Well, Ozier will go to the free throw line, though. His third foul, first deep foul. Have to watch the fouls for Cameron Christon. He's got three now. You know, Zier, he had it. He went with it. Of course, now he's talking about it. Chris is uh, talking about it a little bit here to the official. Well, Zier, two for four so far tonight, makes the first. Came in as a 58% free throw shooter, averaging 15 points, five rebounds, two assists, and 34 minutes a game. Coming off a season high 28 points on Saturday in 35 minutes against Stephen F. Austin. And he nails both of those free throws. Now four of six today at the charity strike. You know, he's done that. His average, he's, he's got four, and that's all from the free throw line tonight. Chris Stein drives. Blocked by Efrit Tui. That's his third block. He Pulled went, out to Randolph. Yeah, he just went and got that one. You almost think he could have just caught it instead of swatting it out. Shot clock didn't reset, so it's under 10 now. Stein, nowhere to go. McGee into the corner. Moss for three. It's an air ball. Gonzalez ahead for Ozier. He scoops and scores. That's four for Ozier here to start the second half. Lead is 11. That's his first field goal. So maybe that'll get him going. 
Well, ULM has really stepped up the defense, this man-to-man -man defense here in the second half. You know, they pushed it. They pushed it up down, up the floor, too. They're trying to get back before uh, Gramlin gets their defense set up. Open three for McGee. Well, he's open for a reason, but he hits the three. <laughs> he, he didn't hesitate to take it, and it, he drilled it. That was his first three attempt on the season. And it's going right for you. It's going right. It is going right for the Grambling Tigers. They're playing well so far. Playing outstanding. If for two, he gets the post touch. Uh, a flop behind him, and they get the call. It's McGee who hit the deck. Yeah, he just went right into him. You've got to spin off of him. That is good. You just got to, you got to go around him instead of through him. He probably felt like he's been pushed down there a little bit, and so he's going to see if he can't do it. Get the, get the floor cleaned up a little bit. And uh, really impressed with Sarion McGee, redshirt sophomore from Milwaukee. Three points in nine minutes in the last game, which was 10 days ago at Lubbock against the 17th ranked Texas Tech Red Raiders. You know that last offensive foul, that's a seventh turnover for ULM. Cunningham a crossover there, but it's it to Moss. Randolph may have taken an extra I step. I thought he took an extra step. But he got it to go. Nifty drive, 16, the largest lead now for Grambling. He covered off a lot of territory. Gonzalez drives uh, to the hoop. He can't get it to fall, but Elijah Gonzalez, the smallest man on the floor, heads back to the free throw line. He's the leading scorers for Grambling, Preston and McGee. Both at 14 points. McGee came in, coach, averaging just 1.3 points per game. He's playing lights out tonight. Oh, <laughs> he, he is filling it up. First free throw is good for Gonzalez. Came in five of seven at the free throw line. That was his first to today. Only three points, only two shots taken. One assist. And two rebounds for Elijah as he gets that one to go. He and Harrison teammates at Clarendon College recruited here together along with their head coach. And he's kind of played his way into the starting line up here. And back to 14 now. Moss. Tristan, he's being uh, covered like white on rice by Morrency. There's contact and an offensive foul called on Terry on Randolph. Harrison did a good job on there getting to him and then when he felt that contact, he, he went down with it. Bring Woodall off the bench. Second leading scorer. He'll come in for Randolph. Lefty. Rambling stays in that man to man defense. Harrison comes out to get it. Now to Morrency. Fade away from Harrison on that left side is no good, and Cunningham grabs the rebound. I mean, like to lost it there, but he, he was able to hang on to it. Kristan a little out of control in the lane, and it is an offensive foul. Now, that's his fourth. That's a, a that's, big foul. That, that is a big foul. Foul number 12 for the Tigers, Cameron Kristan, his fourth foul. 14 the transfer foul. from Boise State. <laughs> we'll have to exit. Edwards will come in for him. You know, like I said, he's averaging 11, and hell, he's got, uh, he's got 14 here today so far. Well, he'll have to sit for quite some time with uh, just over 16 minutes to play. See the shooting percentage not getting much better for ULM at 24%. Rambling, one of the worst shooting teams in the country at 47% coming in. Morrency misses the rebound put back from Afratui. That's what you got to have yeah, from he, the big guy. Yeah, he just followed that one, went up and got it and finished it. That's what he needs to be doing. He just got to follow every possession like that. See if that dunk... Creates some momentum for the Warhawks. There's a lob on the other end. This time, it is Moss who hangs on the rim, and I think he just got teed up. Yeah, he took an extra swing. You know, they, they, they'll let you go. They, they'll let you go one time, but when you just stay there and keep jerking it down, they're going to they're gonna tee you up. Well, uh, he's uh, their most athletic player, and you see why that time is he went up over everybody and got that, but... Yeah, a little bit of a uh, little bit of a stare down of uh, Karim Ozier gets him teed up.
Grambling by 14. Well, as we went to break, a Class B technical foul was given to Prince Moss, as you see the hanging on the rim. And that was his second personal as uh, Russell Harrison shot the free throw. The one technical free throw for a Class B technical foul. And the lead is 13. You never know when that point might come back to, to get you. Well, you know, that's true. I think he was just celebrating. That was, we, we talked about the dunk. That was a great pass that he got to. That lob was, was right on point. And a traveling violation called on Morrency. You know, those turnovers, you know, they start to add up. Yeah, that doesn't have that many of them, like eight, but uh, they're only shooting 10 for 40 from the field. 10 for 40, 25%. It's hard to, to beat anybody then. And then those turnovers means you don't even get those shots. 13-point lead for Cunningham and his scrambling Tiger squad. Out there with Edwards, that's Thomas, the Florida Gulf Coast transfer. Prince Moss. This is the three-point attempt, and here comes ULM. Yeah, ULM's going to start cutting this down. Gonzalez, good drive. Nice pass! Efratui with a strong finish. That's a great pass and a good finish. And, you know, he got it to Efratui where he could handle it. He didn't have to go down with it. He caught it right at his belt and was able to go finish it. It must be nice to be 7-1. <laughs> well, until you go pant shopping, when you go, <laughs> when you go by clothes, it's kind of difficult. And a forced turnover by Elijah Gonzalez. Knocked it away from Edwards, off of Edwards. As the ball went to back behind us. I don't think COVID protocols allows us to go back there and get that ball. But just a great defensive play there from uh, Gonzalez. Oh I didn't hear what they said in the stands. I think they're after you. <laughs> yeah, <somebody. laughs> they might have been. You know, we were talking earlier, you know, I, I, I say it in fun a, a lot of times, but you are a legend around here. And you were telling <laughs> yeah. me the story about Lenny Fant. And you took over, or you played for him, then you took over as his second assistant coach. And there's an offensive foul called on Gonzalez. He pounds his chest, realizing he made a mistake there. Yeah, Coach Fant was, uh, you know, I, I came to, uh, it was Northeast at the time and played for him. He had been a longtime coach here. And he, Coach like 21 years, and uh, and his name's on the his name's on the Coliseum, uh, Fant Ewing. It was Ewing Coliseum until uh, they named it, uh, put his name on it. Shot falls for Travell Cunningham, and the lead to back out to 13 for Grambling. Harrison looking down low for Efratui, and now a steal. Ozier. And it ripped away from Cunningham. And the other way, a slam dunk from Woodall. And did we get another technical foul? Maybe a warning. I think it's just a warning. I think he was just getting the bench back down. So Cameron Woodall, the 6'7 junior. They had been celebrating that turnover and that dunk. There was wide, ULM was wide open under the basket, cutting to the basket. They just didn't get it over his head. Grambling backing up into his own defense. Free throw line, Harrison, that's where you want to get it. And he knocks down the jumper. Get it behind those front two guys at the free throw line, and it's, it's, it's a little gap there. The, the post doesn't want to come up, and the guards don't want to go down, and there's this little sweet spot you can get there, and if you get it there, you either got the shot or you can dump it down low. Cunningham feeds into the corner. Moten for three, and he fills up the net with that three from the corner. That's his first bucket. So, I mean, they're, they're just coming in shooting. Gonzalez quickly the other way has it blocked. And a foul will be called against Marco Morency as he fouls Big Brian Thomas. Kind of out of frustration there. Yeah, he was just going after that one. And, you know, it's basically what after Tui did, trying to get it and put it back in and uh, just made contact. Elijah Gonzalez will check out of the ball game. Josh Nicholas checks in. They're doing this with their... Uh, top scorer in Cameron Christon on the bench with four fouls. And their largest lead at 16. This Grambling team has been impressive here today. 
Top of the key, three, a wide open. What is good for Woodall? The lead is 19 now for Grambling. They're shooting near 50% now. Well, they're just getting the shot, and, and you know, with, with the lead, they got a lot of confidence. There's no pressure on them, and they're just, they're just taking it. They're playing with a lot of confidence. Ozier in trouble. Finds Nicholas, who drives the baseline. Now Morency is hit on the way through by Moten. Michael commits foul. his first foul. foul. Down by 19 points is ULM here at home. This would be a huge uh, win for Grambling, obviously, but how can ULM try to fight their way back into this, this ball game? Well, they're going to do it was on the defensive end. Of course, you got to score, but you got to stop them too. You can't you can't just make up 19. You got to make up whatever you give them also. But uh, missing free throws is not a very good way to start. The limit at the line so far today is six of uh, well, our stat monitor is kind of froze on us. We're 60 percent at the half. Mornsey. Makes the second, so he splits the pair. 18-point lead. This is a Grambling team came in averaging just 54 points per game. They're at 59 at the 12:40 mark. You know they've done a great job of keeping ULM off balance. ULM haven't hasn't just got any great shots. McGee commits an offensive foul. Is again active. Marco Morenzi takes the charge, the and Sirion McGee commits his first. His first foul. Yeah, they were just trying to get to that basket. And, uh, you know, ULM was there to take that charge. How much do you give credit to this team being battle-tested, going out to Arizona, facing Grand Canyon in Arizona, going on the road to face Texas Tech? Well, you know, those games are, are big. They're used to being on the road. But, you know, ULM is at home. They, ought to, uh, they should have the advantage there just from being at home, but they hadn't been at home that much either. Nicholas spins and fires, can't hit. Put back is there for Marco Morenci, who trips over Karimo Zier, who was on the floor. The yeah, ULM was all over the offensive boards. But now they, we got to get a stop on the other end to, to cut this lead down. You can't trade baskets with them. Howell's pass down low. Get it inside. He needs help. Howell guarding McGee, but just the bigger McGee able to get good position in that little right handed hook. It was beautiful. But he got the ball too low. You know, Howell's got to. Either get in front of him that that, that low, or, or get him pushed out, and then somebody's got to drop down and help out. But family shooting the ball so well, nobody wants to leave their man. Harrison continues to play well. He's got a dozen. Williams shooting percentage eking up at 28 percent now. 16 point lead. Moten guarded out front by Morin. See the battle of the fives. You see how it comes out with him that time, and they. He looked like he was thought he was coming out further. He threw it away, intended for McGee, and the turnover gives it back to ULM. They'll have the ball down by 16, but Cameron Woodall and the Grambling Tigers, they've stormed Monroe so far. Three Grambling State Tigers in double figures as they lead ULM 61 to 45. Woodall, McGee, and Kriston. McGee, we're talking during the break, Coach Vining, averaging just 1.3 points per game coming in, but he's had a big night tonight. He, he has really put him up, but you know, Grambling is shooting the ball extremely well. They're shooting right at 54% right now, and ULM shooting 30%. So that, that, and then there's another block. So, you know, going it in against those kind of guys, that's when you got to give it back out to ever who he left should have got the ball. Brian Thomas averaging a block and a half per game. Rejected Ozier's attempt. Warnsey, Ozier, Josh Nicholas on the floor. There's Howell, the freshman. You know, Howell breaks out. Harrison triggers. In and out, no good. Battle for that rebound. Harrison or rather, uh, Howell saved it, but right to the Grambling Tiger. Yep, ULM needed somebody to go and call for it. He could have given it to anybody. He was just trying to save it. He got a hand on the rebound, but wasn't able to hold it. Moss looking to lob down low for Thomas. 
Now Moden drives against Moore and see the batter battle of the uh, number fives and a foul is called underneath. And Moten, who hit that three in, from the corner a moment ago, will head back to the free throw line. That was on Hal, the freshman, his first. Yeah, they, just, they just took it in there, and uh, he got a hand on the ball, but evidently he, he got more than the ball. Free throw, no good. The first free throw attempt, actually, on the season for Moten. A freshman splits the pair, so the lead is 17. Look at that deficit. We're also talking to, during the break. Your ULM need to get this uh, to a 10-point game or under by that eight-minute media timeout. Yeah, you you know you, you can't make a 17-0 run. If you do, you're going to be tied. So he's going to get a little bit at a time. Or out in the right place. Now with the putback there, another offensive rebound for ULM. That's their 16th in the ball game. You know, that's one thing Hal does extremely well. He goes to the offensive boards. He's always around the ball. He may not get it, but he's always around it. 2.6 rebounds for the freshman. Moten gets a screen from Thomas. Now a three attempt is good. Rattled home by Cameron Woodall. He has 15 points and is a perfect three for three from long distance. He's averaging nine for the year. One of career highs, season highs for this Grambling State Tigers team tonight. Their lead is 18 points. Driving is Ozier, and an offensive foul is called. So another turnover for ULM. They haven't turned it over much, but that's the 11th. Yeah, they did a good job of getting in front of him and taking that charge. He was trying to go to the basket, and I know they're all trying to get in there and, and get something started for ULM. I know they're all frustrated. 18 down with uh, less than 10 minutes to go. Everybody's trying to give them that little spark. Gremlin now nine for 18 from three. They came in ranking 346 nationally in three point percentage out of 355 as a foul is called, or rather, a, uh, not a foul, but out of bounds on the sideline over there stays with Grambling. Yeah, Ozier almost come up with a steal. And uh, the ball went out of bounds on uh, on ULM, and but, you know Gremlin is just playing with a lot of confidence, especially with the basketball. Cunningham drives, how the block off the backboard. Here comes a breakaway for the Warhawks. Pull up for Ozier, corner three more, and see is an air ball. Backside rebound pulled down by Terion Randolph. Yeah, that's tough. You just know you're having a bad night. He give up a little short jumper to kick it out to get a three to try to get a spark going and uh, just get an air ball out of it. He tried to give it up and uh, bounced off of him, and Jack Harrison's going to the basket. Harrison fouled on the floor. I believe that'll put uh, ULM in the Out bonus. For the Tigers, Terry and Randolph is fourth foul. That's his fourth. Kristan, the transfer from Boise State, still on the bench since that 17-minute mark with four fouls. Well, you know, the, the coach may just going to, well, he'll play him eventually, but he's just not going to put him out there and, uh, unless he just really needs him. He may wait until the game gets closer and he might bring him in. It may not ever get closer. Big body for Big Bonnie as Sirion McGee comes in for Brian Thomas. Russell Harrison, one and one. And misses the front end. Another front end of a one and one miss, which is just like a turnover. Yep, again, it's just... he remains 18 for the Grambling State Tigers. Yeah, it's a, we've said it more than once. It's just a big confidence factor right now. Moss, an easy drive to the bucket, is Grambling their largest lead, which is 20. Yeah, we got by his man and just carried all all the way to the basket. Now he's very athletic. Al takes six, a three, eight. and he hits it. The freshman from deep. Al had attempted four threes, had not hit one. That's the first three of his college career. It's much needed. Need about five more of those if you're ULM. You start to see Grambling drain that shot clock as well. Moss, pump fakes. Back into the corner, three. 
In and out, no good. That's one of the few that's been missed. That one by Peyton Taylor, the 6'4 junior. Harrison Get a hand lost on it. it. Get a hand on it. And pass ahead intended for Moten was uh, a little too far out in front of him. That takes us to the under eight minute media timeout. Well, Coach Dante Jackson, he has done a phenomenal job with his club tonight. They're up by 17. Grambling Estates, Cameron Woodall has a season high 15 points. And this Grambling State team, 9 of 19 from three point range. He's a perfect three for three. The shooting has been outstanding for the Tigers. Yeah, you know, the Grambling, they're, they're, having, they're shooting 53 from two and 47 from three. So uh, they said they're playing with an awful lot of confidence and, and with good cause. Some new faces in the ball game. That was one of them. And Zakir Sawyer, he was out of control, lost the handle. Yeah, he just. He was about to fall down. I think he, he was. I would like to see when he comes in the game, handle the ball a little bit before he tries to do something like that. I know he's trying to make something happen, understand, but just handle it a couple of times. He just lost his footing and was trying to get rid of it, not to walk. Eight to shoot. What all in the corner? Saw the graphic. They've hit seven of their last nine shots. Over 50% shooting. <laughs> when it's going right, man, it is <laughs> going right. Goes in, switch it to his left hand, and then just. It puts it in. What all? 17 points and 19 against Arizona. As the bucket falls for Ari Olinade. That's his first bucket for the night. He back down to 17, but Grambling's going to start taking the air out of the basketball in every single possession. Yeah, they're going to make sure that uh, they get, get what they want. And usually they, they let more. More than one person had it. This time he's going to try to dribble it. Pass nearly intercepted by Harrison. A floater from Woodall's no good. And the rebound pulled down by Sawyer. Freshman yeah, yeah, gives needs, it up. Yeah, he needs to get rid of it. Well, eight looking down low for Harrison. Coach Richard going with some vets with Howell down low. A reverse layup hits the bottom of the backboard. I think he lost his footing too. He just. He, he wasn't in sync there. He didn't get his steps right. ULM's made a couple of runs at times in the second half, but every time Grambling has had an answer. But, you know, when, when you have a chance to, to make a run, you come up with a stop and you go down and don't even get a decent shot or don't get a shot at all, it really hurts you. With all aggressive, drives the baseline and He's played a lot of minutes tonight. You see him kind of sucking wind down there as he gets that foul called on the baseline. He just went by Harrison. Really didn't have uh, much space down there, but Harrison came over the top and commits his third foul. What all's line? 17 points. On six of ten shooting, three rebounds in 22 minutes. And he's three for three from three-point range, and then uh, this is his free throw. He had uh, he had made two. And he didn't even start. See Cameron Criston checking back in the transfer from Boise State, who committed his fourth foul early on in this second half. We thought that could be a, a key foul or a key player off the floor, but they have picked up his slack. Uh, tapped out of bounds. It's going to stay right here with Grambling. That uh, defines kind of the night as ULM couldn't uh, grab hold of that rebound. Josh Nicholas checks out. Johnny Williams, the fourth, comes in for the first time for Coach Richard. You see Kristan and Randolph in foul trouble. You know, Coach Richard has got uh, Harrison out of the game right now. Cunningham. Number three now for Moss. I was expecting that to go in, but it fell short. So Olenay's going to get it, get a handle on it. He's going to take his three. And he hits it. Olenay now with five points off the bench. It's a 14-point game with 440 to play. Hey, just got to get some stops to go with that. Cunningham hands it off for Moss. First on and Ramley stayed in no hurry. 
Spinning, McGee. Moss, the tough drive and a late foul call. Going to go against Sawyer. That, that was late. His first foul, seventh team foul. It's a very late call. And either it should be a no call or an offensive foul, in my opinion. The late whistle goes the way of the Tigers. Prince Moss, who also had a good game right down the middle with that free throw. Moss in double figures with 11 points. You know, Moss is 6'8", but he, he plays, you know, like he's about 6'2 or 6'3. He handles the ball. He's just a big guard that can do anything. That long wingspan as well. We saw that on that lob dunk that he had earlier. He does 15. Nolan 8, floater. Altered by McGee, and it's a little bit too strong. He got by his man, but he, he couldn't take it all the way to the goal, so he tried to pull up. Yeah, they're just going to just kind of play with it now. McGee going up against the freshman, Hal. Skip out to Cunningham. Moss open for three. Rebound to Olinade. Let's start pushing the uh, issue now. You know, Coach Richard's giving these guys a chance to score now and see what uh, let them let them play and, and, and get some playing time and get uh, so we can see if he can use them later on during the season. It was Demarcus Hall? He had a wide open look. Uh, the freshman for three, and uh, that one uh, came up short as well. Grambling calls a timeout. They lead the Warhawks by 15. Here in Monroe, where Grambling State leads by 15 over ULM. 323 to go in this one alongside Coach Mike Vining, former Northeast and ULM men's head basketball coach. I'm Chris Harris, and still a uh, bit of time left, but ULM's going to have to make a charge pretty quickly. Yeah, that you know, we come back with a shot of Coach Richard over there. He's uh, He's got to be really disappointed and down right now, especially after the way they played the other day. How with a good steal, he saves it and keeps it or gets possession for ULM. Media timeout now, still a 15-point deficit for ULM. It's time to find out. Final 312 of this contest. Rambling with a 15 point lead over ULM, shooting 51% from the floor. Coach Dante Jackson, third season as head coach. He was the SWAT coach of the year in his first season, 17 18. He had 17, 17 win seasons each of the past three years. You know, Coach Richard's got these uh, young guys in the game now to give them some some playing time, some experience, and, uh, you know, just see what they can do and how they're going to do it. He's going to step up. Driving in uh, to the lane was Akir Sawyer. And he'll head to the free throw line where he's attempted six free throws so far this year. Mentioned the, uh, a couple of games ago, his connection, Sawyer's father, Alan Sawyer was an All-State football player at Bastrop High School. He missed that first free throw. But Coach Richard talked about him uh, when, when he signed him. He really liked the way he aggressively went to the basket. And we've seen that here uh, tonight, as he did just then. Now, earlier, he, he got in there and got a couple blocked, but he was going to the basket. Sawyer's dad played for the UNLV running Rebels and drafted by the Vikings. We'll see who will see step up. Here we go, uh, guarding uh, Cunningham, who's in no hurry. Ten on the shot clock. Finds a little bit of a lane blocked by Sawyer. And a miss. He picks up the rebound. Another DeMarcus Hall picked up the uh, rebound. Now. Trying to get in the lane, lost the handle. A jump ball is called. It'll stay on this end with ULM. He got in there and got 
got stretched out and was trying to underhand it, and they just got a hand on it. And uh, the official right here in front of us, uh, Dixon, Roger Dixon, uh, called it a jump ball, hell ball. So Michael Moten checks in for point guard Travel Cunningham. There's Johnny Williams, the fourth. He can't hit. Good luck. The freshman from Sarasota, Florida, Putnam Science Academy. Played in just three minutes at La Tech so far this year. For Grambling, this is going to be a great win for them. Their first win over a D1 school this year. Yeah, they, they like to go on the road. They play well, shoot the ball extremely well. It should give them an awful lot of confidence. You know, it's a tough loss for ULM. You know, they just beat. Uh, <laughs> <Gallery> <laughs> they, just can't, they just can't miss. Chris Todd with 17 points. He's been in double figures for their first five games. And ULM just cannot hit anything right now. You know, ULM lost a heartbreaker, as I was saying earlier. Then Williams hits that one. Johnny Williams with the first points of his college career. But ULM lost a heartbreaker to Lamar and then uh, go to, to Northwestern and pull out that win and then come back here and beat Stephen F. Austin. And uh, which was a real big win uh, from what Stephen F. Austin had done. Coming up for uh, the Warhawks, 32nd timeout taken there by Grambling. They're at Southern Miss on Saturday, Saturday, then back here at Fent Ewing Coliseum for five straight. Of course, Louisiana Tech, December 22nd. We'll have that game right here on ESPN Plus. Be a rematch from Eamon Rustin, in which they won by uh, double figures. Louisiana Tech did. Yeah, you, Louisiana Tech's got a strong team. They're, they got a good inside game. They've got some very talented athletes. Moten, a great pass. Gives off for Cobb, who puts the exclamation point on this uh, victory for Grambling. That was, his first basket. that was his first basket, but he cut to the basket, and they got it to him, and he finished it. Williams will fire another three. Get the one earlier, that one missed. And Grambling has it with 45 to play. And has been kind of a, a seesaw these last three games for ULM. Well, you know, you know, you know, Coach Richard's having to been on a, an emotional roller coaster, and he's at the very bottom of it right now. Of course, you know, Coach Jackson is uh, feeling real good about going on the road and coming up with a win. <laughs> <laughs> Moten with the, his second three. Hadn't made one this year. And the lead is 19 for Grambling State. They'll finish this game, Coach Vining, at 51% from the floor. 10 of 22 from three. Al drives and is fouled. He'll go to the free throw line with 9.8 seconds. You know, I believe right now Grambling's manager could shoot a three and make it. They, they, everything, they got everything going for them. They came in as... One of the worst teams in the country, offensive efficiency, but tonight they have rectified that and shot the ball. Lights out all night long. Howell's free throw is good. He has eight points. Howell came in averaging 5.5. He had 12 points in his return home to Natchitoches. It's Northwestern State. Over Two perfect free throws there. Coach Vining, uh, this ULM uh, group will uh, regroup, head to uh, Hattiesburg for a date with Southern Miss this weekend. That'll be a tough game. And, you know, they've got to improve that 30% shooting and, and just keep their heads up. You know, they got to just play hard. Coach Richard's got a lot to, to work on tomorrow. He's got a lot to got to pick these guys up, and somebody's going to help pick him up, too, I'm sure. Grambling goes to two lanes. These guys got a lot of confidence going to, down to the Crescent City. They do. They shot right at 52% and uh, right at 50% from three-point range. So they play with that, with that confidence. They're going to do well. We'll wrap things up from here in Monroe for Coach Mike Vining. I'm Chris Harris. Our producer was Wayne Gentry saying so long from Monroe, Louisiana. Our final score, Grambling 78, ULM 61. All games airing on the ESPN Networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.